here. Uh, we are very happy that a lot of people are here. Uh, it's great. Uh, we have um, organized under the cover, like head of a uh, uh, Viera Yarosova Award for young and um, um, established art, uh, art critics. Uh, we are organized right now a uh, discussion on uh, Documenta 14, uh, which is already gone. It's closed uh, last weekend. Um, so, um, yeah, uh, maybe I will give the word to <laughs> uh, our moderator, Jan Zalesak, uh, who will introduce you our guests. Thank you very much. So, uh, thanks for introducing me. Uh, my task will be to introduce the other members of uh, our participants in uh, the discussion. Thanks for coming, it's like a really pleasure to have such a big crowd. I hope it won't make us too nervous. So I uh, think like all of the ten of our professionals are like me. Uh, so uh, the topic is like uh, learning from Documenta and uh, that's obviously one of the like motives which were all around the Documenta, uh, like this one of the main uh, discourse it like lines uh, connected to this year's documenta and that also somehow structured the, the panel. So uh, let me introduce uh, Ken Van Go in a spatial order uh, on my like, right, right hand, Irena uh, Heyduk, uh, uh, artist who participated uh, in uh, documenta 14 with uh, Yuko Export uh, project. Uh, then uh, Pierre uh, Balblanc. Uh, curator who uh, was a director of uh, CAC Bretigny, if I see it right, uh, in Paris uh, till uh, 2014, and then, more or less, then became a member of uh, Documenta 14 uh, curatorial team, uh, which is actually one of the important features of the Documenta that it was actually quite a big uh, collective of curators working under, let's say, or in dialogue with uh, Adam Kuczyk as the artistic director of the Documenta 14. Uh, Michal Novotny, whom you might know, uh, is uh, uh, director of uh, Futura uh, in Prague. And uh, since we are here, uh, let's say, in the framework of uh, Viera Jerusova Award, uh, it might be also good to mention that it's actually uh, the person who uh, won the award uh, one year ago. And uh, Teresa Stejskalová from uh, Transit, uh, is it now Transit? <laughs> uh, <laughs> never know exactly. Uh, from, uh, from, from Transit, uh, Prague, uh, let's say curator, writer, uh, curation who uh, in her practice deals with topics such as uh, feminism, precarity, postcolonialism, and try to address these topics within her work uh, within uh, Transit uh, in the last uh, couple of years on this like, institutional level. Uh, I mean, the way uh, it's gonna work is that uh, we will possibly, uh, or not possibly, but certainly we will start with some sort of like statements or uh, insights or impressions because uh, on the panel we have uh, people with, let's say, different perspectives. Uh, Irena and Pierre uh, were, let's say, part of a uh, documenta as an artist or as a curator, uh, Michal and uh, Teresa. Uh, where, let's say, art professionals visiting Documenta, so their perspectives will be will be different. So I will ask in the beginning, like uh, each each of the panelists, to uh, let's say bring some personal perspective of or experience with uh, Documenta 14, and uh, that's going to be our starting point. One thing I would like to say in the beginning, I think the the time frame is, uh, let's say, we should be. Having this discussion for about like an hour, an hour or an hour and something, the time when we should end is something like half past uh, seven. So uh, the typical thing would be to have this discussion in the end. We know that that sometimes is a problem because uh, maybe there is like some topic which you find interesting, then the discussion goes farther and some of the things get forgotten. So like if you actually felt that there is like something addressed which you would like to like. Uh, not say, but say maybe interrupt, but uh, also uh, <coughs> uh, uh, mm, what is the what is the word? Uh, hmm? contribute. contribute maybe yes with a question or with a suggestion. Please uh, don't hesitate. Just like somehow make it clear that you would like to say something, and definitely uh, you will you will get a word. Uh, 
if that's not going to happen, then we are going to just talk, and in the end, uh, we, we make something like an open discussion. Uh, so I will stop talking now, and I will get the mic to uh, Irena. What, what to do with the mic? <laughs> talk about my personal experience? Yes. Okay. <laughs> well, I, I can start by talking about this context here, which is a kind of a uh, art criticism prize, uh, how I understand it. Uh, for me, art criticism and art history have always been very interesting only in the way that they are disciplines that make history. And the only attraction that I ever had to these people who study this and write is the discipline uh, of uh, being kind of committed to making one. Uh, coincidentally, uh, Yugo Export is an oral corporation which is, through this aspect of orality, concerned with making history, I guess, via oral means by creating oral images. And I think in kind of a contemporary art exhibition, one which was Documenta 14, uh, there's kind of a two approaches or ones that present themselves to me that create some stakes in what I'm thinking about, is the kind of history of presented as a history through the archive, or history is always as some kind of an archive. And for me, in the West, the archive has always been this kind of dead thing, uh, a thing that uh, goes through a process of being put away or being somewhere for a long time, uh, dead and dying very much like the way that artworks are presented. It's this kind of a entombed uh, uh, way. And then it kind of goes through a process of embalming because it rots and it creates a kind of a stink. Uh, and then this... Um, this archive is then taken out of that context of when actually, which time period is addressed, historical, and then put into a new context and that is supposed to provide meaning. And for me it was always very difficult to ingest this type of archive because something that rots and that is embalmed is not very tasty. And I'm very interested in, I guess, corporation and incorporation. And uh, I don't like things that stink and rot in my mouth. Um, Unless it's really good French cheese, I guess, but that's different. Um, so I think of a kind of an archive and Yugo Export as a living artwork has, that goes through kind of not a process of embalming, but a process of pickling, where when pickling you have this um, uh, means of knowing only at which stage of enrichment of taste and expansion of kind of a, um, uh, the spectrum of taste uh, by actually coming into contact with something, ingesting it through the mouth, and knowing what it is then. It changes chemically because you put it in contact with other things. Um, this pickling process is tricky, especially when you're operating in a kind of a warmer temperature, which is usually the south, which is where what our context kind of was at least discursively started as. So it needs to be managed because of the temperature. And kind of administration, which I don't like as a word, because it kind of it deals with bodies and decision of what is human, what is a thing. I like uh, management, and like um, management is kind of a holy discipline. You have to manage the pickle, and usually pickle is made out of a large amount of things that are pickled at one time, and it's this is a kind of a strength in numbers, um, and a pickle is an army of a kind. Yeah. Um, so yeah, pickling is, um, there's also the aspect of it which, like for example in the ancient Roman state, you have to adorn um, uh, the slaves that were making kind of a large amount of the population, both in the Athenian and the Roman state, wanted to, uh, there was a proposition at some point to adorn them with uniforms, but then the population knew that if they were uniformed, they would know their numbers, and I find that uh, the kind of, uh, that then there was a bandit, of course, because then they will rebel. They're like, there's so much of us, there's so little of them, let's kill them. Um, I started with Yugo Export, I guess, through a process of kind of a uniformization by production of the Yugo form, which is this uniform that was made for movement and freedom of movement. And um, uh, a kind of a living thing also. Um, so yeah, maybe I can start through this kind of a, a corporation and a gesture to the mouth, dwelling in the darkness because pickling is best in the dark in a cellar. Um, and the conditions that kind of you go export as a 
history making platform wants to establish uh, in the field of making history with this condition of blindness or darkness where in the darkness you have this um, equivalence which has to be established between things because you don't know what's in the room with you so you have to contact the things and in orality pre pretty much darkness works very well because all you need is an ear and a voice in order to create a kind of a history so yeah, making history, art history, and so on. I will stop now. Pierre? Okay, so this is a special exercise. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. so we have to improvise, I understand. So that's a bit what we did with Documenta, basically. Uh, I feel I was one of the most for improvisation, I would say. Uh, because what um, was the interesting uh, aspect of Documenta, of, of the invitation by Adam Shimshik to take part, uh, me as a, as a curator, so um, Irena can also speak about that as a, an artist, but as a curator was to have a kind of a very uh, uh, enfin, a specific um, uh, framework, which was uh, uh, to uh, work on uh, two location, um, uh, I would say uh, successively and simultaneously, which is very important because uh, uh, so we know the history of Documenta and, uh, and how it is uh, linked to the a very special history of Germany and, uh, and then how it became a, a worldwide, a west-wide canon and canon and so uh, how uh, Adam uh, Shinchik uh, chose to uh, challenge this history through uh, uh, the move to Athens. So uh, uh, I can speak about my, my experience uh, of the invitation because he, he offered me uh, in a very appropriate moment because I was really uh, under uh, a heart crisis in my uh, uh, position in uh, Brittany in the, in the art center in the suburb of Paris where I was since 10 years running this place and uh, uh, where the politician and the uh, administration was really uh, <clears throat> starting to destroy completely uh, the project I have uh, initiated there. And so uh, it was really the time for me to leave. And I think 10 years in any case for running a, uh, an art center is enough. And uh, so Adam uh, hopefully asked me to join this uh, project and I um, welcome this uh, idea because also he proposed me to come to Athens. So it was two, two very interesting uh, uh, opportunities, so Documenta and uh, Athens where I never been before. And so, uh, uh, but uh, to come back on this uh, framework, uh, what was very important is to have uh, already in this uh, proposal, ev uh, basically everything uh, said. So uh, we, uh, I would say, just follow after uh, we, we uh, fill it, this framework. Uh, because the complexity of, of this framework was enough to uh, make what we did, basically. And, uh, and uh, the result also, uh, because uh, when I arrived in, uh, in Athens, it was in late uh, 2014. Uh, the crisis uh, was uh, very high with the, with the economic situation. The government was uh, not anymore uh, uh, governing. Uh, and um, uh, so we, we really, uh, we have followed all the different uh, steps of the, uh, arriving of uh, Syriza, uh, the, the uh, a very strong moment of crisis when, uh, when uh, before the election, then the election, the uh, the high level of crisis in 
uh, in discussion with the European and uh, uh, MFI, etc. So uh, I have to say that this this was also very um, important in the in the the the, uh, the, the, the way we, we were we were influenced. Uh, by uh, by our um, uh, project, so the context was really extremely uh, uh, affecting, extremely uh, our point of view. And um, I, I will maybe not to uh, go too too far, but uh, uh, the only uh, thing uh, was to after after that every every of us uh, uh, curator as artist invited were uh, offered to come first in Athens in any case, to uh, consider the invitation and to uh, start to work, and then to castle. And um, uh, basically, the, the project was uh, a way to uh, uh, transform uh, the, what, what is usually done in castle uh, uh, in, in, um, in uh, thinking and in, uh, uh, in uh, reversing the point of reflow from Athens. Uh, so this this um, uh, framework is uh, extremely uh, linked to the uh, close history of the documenta and uh, in Germany because uh, Germany has a, a very close relation with Greece and has a, as a, a model uh, Germany uh, was built on on the Greek uh, uh, canon I would say. And uh, uh, this was also a way to deconstruct this uh, 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 history and to uh, try to um, analyze uh, uh, deeply uh, what was made uh, 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 exactly uh, what uh, what this what this exhibition was about. And uh, another aspect was also this uh, relation between north and, and south, which was a, a K and uh, a wish to allegorize, uh, enfin, to, to make it as uh, something which was also a global question, not just European, but uh, worldwide. Thank you. Okay. What was the question? <laughs> <laughs> Okay. It wasn't a question, it was more a suggestion, a suggestion to bring some personal perspective or experience, which can be like really personal, I mean like... Uh, okay, uh, so I, I did not uh, obviously co-organize the Comenta, but uh, I visited uh, the Comenta on the preview days, and I also wrote an article about it, but uh, unfortunately I only visited the castle part because my editor was not keen to pay me the trip to Athens. Uh, so, personal impression. I think for me, uh, one significant uh, event that happened already at the very beginning of the visit, when I was walking a street and I met one another Czech art critic, who is actually a kind of matador of the Czech art criticism. Uh, he's, I think, hopefully not here. And uh, he told me, oh my god, all this average Greek art. And I think this was quite well pointed, and for me it was very important that uh, maybe we should not always look at quality as something inherent, but to think about the context. So for me, documenta in this sense was important, that somehow maybe uh, uh, surprised this art critic who was always thinking about art as inherently good or bad, and not, not really thought about the context. It's also kind of difficult to uh, judge here the exhibition when <laughs> the people who organize it are sitting next to me. Uh, but, uh, uh, yeah. but then another thing that follows up a bit uh, this uh, suggestion was that I was meeting many people and they told me, yeah, I didn't find any really great works. Yeah. And this was also something for me peculiar in the way the public looks on these exhibitions. That maybe you should not look for individual works, and I think for me also very important was that there were not so many, at least, or from my point of view, not majority of very well-known big artists that would do some big public realizations, and it was in the last years, that also the organizers in Castle decided not to use the park that traditionally is that kind of uh, 
very visitor-friendly park in the summer to walk and look for those uh, big public sculptures. So for me, what was important, and often actually as a curator I also look for, is how the curator saw this exhibition. And maybe we can speak about this later, I guess. Okay, so, um, so I will start with a personal <laughs> um, anecdote or incident that um, <laughs> I experienced because I wanted to visit uh, Documenta. It, was, uh, it happened during the preview days. I also visited only the castle part. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so I went to uh, the, I went to see it, and on our way, uh, our car burned down. <laughs> so, so yeah, we had to go back basically <laughs> because we didn't have it. Like everything was in the car, so we didn't even have ID. I, I know ID card or something. So <laughs> we had to go back, and and then so I was like, hmm, maybe like gods don't want me to. <laughs> to uh, see it, or like, my curatorial career is <laughs> whatever, it's just not happening this, at this moment. Anyway, so, uh, and then in the, it was the summer, okay, so maybe I should go to Athens, but yeah, it's, it was so hot. <laughs> and the plane ticket, so. Uh, and then, then Anushka wrote me an email. There is this discussion that you maybe should participate, that we, we would like you to, uh, to come to participate. And I, was, uh, and I, yeah, but I, you know, I haven't seen it. And it's like the last weekend is next weekend. So, you know, it's not really probable that I, I will be able to participate in the discussion. But then uh, there was like a friend of, our, of mine who, who just took me there and then took me back. So. I was, my, I was, um, yeah, so I've seen it, so, anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, and I have, okay, and I also saw the castle part, and I think, yeah, to see the whole documenta, I think you have to really be a devoted um, art fan, and, yeah, maybe I'm not so devoted, so. <laughs> and the whole documenta for me, uh, my, my, uh, like a word that's, that kind of sums up my experience is, um, or my, how I experience it is contradiction. I think it was a very contradictory documenta for me. I perceived it as, uh, as on, the hand, on the one hand as, um, as very radical and subversive, and on the other hand very elitist and very conservative. So, uh, let me elaborate. Uh, I mean, radical and subversive because of this move to, uh, to uh, the kind of split, uh, geographical sp uh, split and also content-wise uh, between Germany and Greece, the north and the south, and um, also radical in its uh, like political message. Uh, and uh, and at the same time conservative, and um, you know on the one hand taking the position of the most uh, marginalized uh, ones or the most oppressed, I would say today, and on the other hand uh, it was really like um, um, mm, conservative in the terms of uh, display how the pieces were displayed and, and uh, Michal already mentioned that it was not really, um, it, uh, you know, it was in galleries mainly, or galleries, like uh, white cubes. Or, uh, also, uh, when there was like, um, it was a kind of very high bro, I would say. Like when you had music, it was uh, avant-garde music or very experimental music. When it was dance, it was very, you know, like avant-garde experimental dance. It was very. Um, it was really uh, like um, not really references to mass culture that much. So it was kind of uh, elitist in a way in its content. I see it, and I kind of liked it. I I, I liked it. I have to say I liked it. <laughs> you don't have to. Say. Uh, no, but I but I it's sincere. Uh, but I think it was. Um, I liked it because I'm a I'm a leftist uh, or left leaning. Um, uh, educated um, uh, cultural worker, <laughs> or, um, 
and and I think uh, this was um, this was speaking this it was like speaking to me and also those who are like me. But uh, yeah, I'm not sure if um, if uh, be, uh, you know if beyond this uh, like if uh, if it could also speak to to other groups and um, also. Um, also, because I have to, I'm thinking, of, I'm mentioning this because, um, um, you know, this position of <laughs> uh, left-leaning uh, um, uh, intellectual nowadays, especially in Eastern Europe, is very uh, precarious and very unpopular. So, yeah, I'm asking myself questions whether, um, you know, whether this, also this kind of audience, who is the audience, if this is, you know, Okay, so the idea was that uh, these kind of like introductory insights will get us to some more questions and a uh, way where we might go. Actually, uh, I think it's also totally an open occasion for you to interact with each other, but uh, maybe also my experience, uh, <laughs> since I'm sitting here, uh, I was actually in both places as a, as a viewer, uh, not review time. Uh, and I was thinking about uh, one of the things which I read today in uh, Adam Shinchik's uh, text in, in the Reader, that uh, the idea of like uh, moving documenta to Athens wasn't only about this, let's say, geopolitical um, issues or about uh, this kind of relationship between Germany and Athens or, or Greece and this kind of like historical, um, let's say, ways which is there, but also about like broadening uh, the audience, that you will actually get this kind of like highlight exhibition into the space where there's like a, let's say, different structure of uh, population, different structure of people who might actually attend uh, the exhibition. And I think like for those who haven't been there, it's kind of, kind of important to say that unlike uh, the venues in Kassel, which were uh, most of them actually had to pay the, the entrance fee, which wasn't like for the Czech audience, for example, it wasn't like that little amount of money, it was something like almost like 30 euros for two days, I guess. In Athens, most of the venues actually were for free, except for like the main exhibition spaces like uh, EMST, uh, maybe that was the only one, maybe with the, with, with the entrance. Uh, so I was like wondering, but still, uh, the, the point which I want to say is actually that, that I had the feeling that in Athens, I'm actually meeting the same kind of people as I'm meeting in, uh, in Kassel. That it, from my perspective, it didn't really happen that it actually changed the audience substantially. Uh, that it still was this kind of like standard art crowd, let's say, uh, who actually took the plane and came from, from Germany or from Japan or like from wherever to Athens and attended the exhibition, attended the performances. Maybe, if, maybe I mean, you obviously have the experiences from both places, like if uh, you can kind of reflect on that. I mean, if it's just like my kind of like uh, impression, which was, let's say, partial because I have just like seen like uh, two or three days in, in, in Athens or, or does it actually also correspond with your experience? I think uh, with one million visitors it's uh, elitism for everybody. For <laughs> it's a special elitism. Uh, I think the problem of documenta is exactly the, the opposite, uh, and that's uh, something that I discovered because I was not prepared and not expected that, is that it's a massive exhibition. And any, anything you would do now, you would have one million. Because it is in the, it is in, in the culture, also in the, uh, the culture of, uh, it's very popular in Germany, and all Germans come to Documenta to have an experience of um, contemporary culture. And so it's, uh, on the contrary, extremely popular and extremely diverse because there is also all the uh, professional, all the elites of art, of international crowds, uh, all the critics, all the, I mean, it's a, it's a very, very particular, uh, I, I think, uh, Compared to Venice, it's, it's comparable, but um, I, I think um, 
in, in, uh, in Documenta, there is a, a strong invest involvement in education as well, and uh, there is not the that's not the case in Venice, for example, and the format of the, of the bi Venice Biennial is, is very different. So the, the problem, I think, it's much more the, 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 the other way is uh, to ask uh, what, what do you do with this? and how this affects considerably the way to make exhibition uh, or to make art for artists. Um, well, in Athens, I know because um, my contribution was a kind of one image in the Amst, and then every Friday the incorporation documents of Hugo Export were read in Greek in a kind of a traditional manner. Um, and they were placed in a store uh, and uh, a rubbing from a stele, which is the, how laws were introduced into the Athenian state. Uh, people would file uh, papyrus, in, I'm gonna come to a point, papyrus into <laughs> Agora, that was like a legal tribute or a law, and then uh, marble acquired the um, quality of a copy, and marbles would be placed around the city of Athens. Uh, readers would come once a week and read the, uh, the documents for people who could not read. So uh, this oration of the uh, incorporation documents which are filed in Belgrade, Serbia and Chicago, USA were translated into Greek and one of the members of this army that we have uh, embodied in a documenta would come once a week and read it as the night fell. All, almost all the audiences for those uh, readings were Greek people because the text was in Greek. People could, of course, follow with this rubbing into, in the window of the store. And, uh, I mean, I know that most people were from Athens, so I think it was well visited from uh, citizens of Athens. Uh, and many people passed through the store because it was kind of a public space in a transit area. So I got lots of contacts from people writing about the text via email, for example, because we had a website on the door as well. Uh, in Kassel, the problem was exactly what uh, Pierre has described. It was, uh, uh, I did not expect so much uh, people. <laughs> I mean, they told me the number some last time, but I don't have a conception of such a number because every other large institutional show that I have had did not have this many visitors and did not last for this, this long, some of them have, but still, this kind of active act of, uh, uh, of the pride of Germany Documenta exhibition where people would show up and kind of think it's a right to consume artworks and be given things uh, was uh, something that we wanted to slow down and challenge. Like Hugo Export had kind of a whole floor at the top of uh, Neue Neue Galerie and uh, its own staff installed, which are workers working for Hugo Export and part of security and invigilator staff, which was hired by Documenta, which was managing three spaces, a transactional area where things were not shown but could be um, orally described and purchased, and we issued uh, uh, incorporation documents that were uh, additioned and people could pay to get them. Same amount of money that they would pay to get it from the Rathaus in, um, in uh, Castle, one of their GGMBH documents, a waiting area with a piste for uh, a fashion presentation or this spinal discipline uh, uh, walk, and then a program on the hour every hour, which is this program on kind of how history is being made today, an interview I made with such a book which called Seductive Exacting Realism. All three spaces were highly challenging for people. One, uh, people couldn't take things, they had to purchase them. Two, they had to declare an income level if they wanted to purchase anything because everything was done through flexible pricing. And three, they couldn't see anything, they had to ask for it except these two stairs with uh, incorporation documents. The next area which continued on was the waiting area, so they had to wait half an hour to be let into the other space. That caused a lot of like physical uh, altercations with the security staff and invigilators. I did not expect that. Um, people had to be thrown out because they didn't want to wait. And I think waiting is one of the great aggressions that kind of uh, uh, West White Cannon institutes in, uh, in uh, kind of through economic warfare, wasting and waiting. And then when people were let into the blind room, which was this completely dark room where this interview was being enacted by two voice actresses. Um, they would, did not want to stay inside for uh, 26 minutes and wanted to leave, but they couldn't. So the space was very challenging, I think, for, for the visitors. 
because they either wanted to take things, they think art should give things for free, they wanted to get them immediately, and they wanted the experience to be this kind of extremely um, accessible aesthetic experience. Um, so I think they were challenged at kind of all possible levels, and there was lots of frustration. But as the, the, the exhibition, uh, I guess, went on, we really learned a lot how to deal with these type of situations and ask questions like, there was no photography in this space. Because until I, we can figure out how to create an image that is an oral image that unfolds for a long time with a camera, I didn't want people consuming with their cameras um, these images and making these images that would then permeate um, uh, kind of the digital sphere. So what does it mean to have a right to take an image or just a right to take and then challenge that right? I think this is not, I think, Kind of a, the right to take an image is kind of a misunderstanding of a word, freedom, and especially this word, which is quite toxic and I think comes from this misunderstanding of uh, ancient Greek culture, which is freedom of expression within democracy and freedom of uh, speech. And then uh, uh, this, this, this right to just take and touch, um, which is kind of that everything has a price and everything should be purchasable and that everything uh, must pass through money. Um, so there was lots of challenges there, and the German audience, to be honest, was the most uh, uh, difficult one, but also the most, the most challenging, and they were, I think, got the most out of it, because there were, some people were just like, fuck off, I'm leaving, and other people really wanted to find out. Um, so, and during the preview days, that was the most chaotic, because there was lots of people from the, uh, the field, and they were no different, I must say. So there were just more of them, I guess. So that was my experience, but we learned a lot, and I'm still pro processing what does it mean, what, we ha what have we done, you know, uh, with making a corporation and presenting its process as ongoing, pickling, and uh, extending things, and delaying things, and uh, making people wait, uh, not as an act of uh, being ready, which is really what I wanted to do with freedom of uh, movement and allowing people to move this spinal discipline performance to move through the city kind of a practice uh, versus like being immobilized and torn down by the weight of waiting. I think these aggressions are very interesting to be kind of sent back into the bodies of those who usually uh, live well in the cost of, through the cost of these actions. So that was my experience when it comes to audience. Yeah? And, Maybe I will like turn the question a bit somewhere else, but in follow up what you say. Uh, that I think also the problem with thinking about uh, audiences is that very often we think about them in the kind of contemplative paradigm that the art has. That audience seeing something, visiting something is to go to see it or take a picture maybe of it. And uh, at least for me again, from someone who read documenta from outside as, as a visiting person, uh, it was a lot of, the stress was a lot of uh, put on the sort of materiality also of this crowd that comes, but also on other materialities that goes along with this kind of exchange between the South and West, between this export and import. So I think that it is, um, first of all, difficult to consider uh, the impact on the frame of audiences. I think it was very important that some artwork has been moving, that materials has been moving, that money has been moving also, which we often do not consider exhibitions. We only count the amount of people that sell them. And uh, also in the fact that, uh, for example, the people who came to Kassel uh, saw this collection of the Athen Museum, they were forced somehow to sell this collection because everybody would go to see the Federiziano. So for me, this kind of hijack the project that has somehow has been already spoken in here, anyway, is going to have a certain amount of visitors just from its very character. Because it's document that people will go there, whatever it is. And uh, to kind of force them to see something they would never go to see, probably, it's very important and interesting. I didn't go to <laughs> Because everyone was like, you know, you such a big uh, exhibition, so you have to, you know, select, and everyone, I, I had different uh, feedback, so, yeah, I don't go. <laughs> I'm sorry for you, <laughs> because it was very interesting. <laughs>
Yeah. Like, uh, what would again? I mean, like, I'm not maybe so, so good in like making uh, making these uh, things like into questions, but I mean, also like for me, from what we said now, I mean, this 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 moving from from let's say some contemplative experience towards more like corporal experience, like really uh, was uh, one of the main features for me. I mean, like uh, also in special in Athens, like when you have to move from like spot to spot to spot, kind of like you actually spend your days like trying to get from one place to another. And that's somehow the, the, the strongest experience, actually, like uh, in, in the end of the day. I mean, like actually seeing the places. And it was also like, one, of, one, of the, one of the striking features for me, again, I feel like especially in Athens, that uh, there was like more effort actually put into uh, writing text about places than the artworks themselves. Uh, which, again, I'm not sure like if it was uh, like super curatorial, let's say, purpose or some, some intention that this was actually. But again, in this like Adam Shimchik's text, actually, there was quite a lot of stress put on this specific point that actually the places themselves are somehow more important than the artworks, or at least let's say the same 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 level. And uh, I'm not sure if I can like transform it into into a question, but I mean, like one of the things we were talking uh, in, in a kind of, like, short pre-discussion meeting was. Uh, and uh, maybe I was try to stay with this like notion of the of the audience, and some 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 tension between uh, the notion of the audience, maybe in some sort of like traditional uh, perspective of exactly the person who let's say comes somewhere to see something, to experience something, which is somehow already given, and so it's <coughs> this kind of like strangely active passive role uh, towards uh, the body or the bodies, uh, which was this experience of this kind of like mass of people like moving around, but also like from let's say more uh, intellectual point of view that something is happening when you actually stop thinking about the audience, but you start to think about the bodies. I mean like again, like if there's maybe something you can try to like reflect on or elaborate, maybe also from curatorial curator or art perspective, like if there's actually some really semantic change, like if there are some like new qualities like happening, if you maybe uh, the notion of identity, let's say, is uh, to be understood differently when we think about bodies, not about audiences, or yeah, stuff like that. So, again, I have better work. If yeah, maybe it's it's important to to say that uh, concerning the, the the composition of the exhibition in matter of. Uh, Creating, uh, we um, proceed uh, much more um, as uh, creating, a defining a framework and um, uh, letting inside, uh, in the inside this display, in a way, uh, the, the thing uh, produce themselves. Uh, so it's a turn in matter of curating. Uh, <coughs> Because uh, the uh, the composition is not anymore made about a narrative that is built with a, a beginning and an end, and you follow the narrative, and there is a unique uh, 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 direction. Uh, on the contrary, we uh, we share with Adam Shimchik uh, different narratives, and uh, we uh, organize a kind of um, uh, a dispositive in which a different uh, melody line, I would say, uh, were uh, possible to follow. And uh, the visitor is invited to follow and to compose his own uh, 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 narratives inside uh, 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 a diversity of possibilities. So it's, it's why also it was not necessary uh, to go uh, to uh, to attend to understand uh, a castle or vice versa, and it was not necessary to go in both places to understand what's happened. It's not anymore uh, necessary to see all the works in a documenta because it's not possible, and uh, this is not made for that. It's not made to be exhaustive and to have seen everything. It's just made to have your own experience and to build uh, your own uh, way to approach things. So that that's was a very uh, important thing because uh, what uh, were uh, with the curator's uh, common practice, I would say, 
was to have uh, this in common, to uh, work in a much more open uh, form uh, processes. Uh, I was, for example, uh, myself really, I, I am really uh, inspired by uh, music uh, scores and uh, how scores are giving this possibility to determine a, a certain uh, uh, a framework in which uh, then uh, uh, allow uh, any possibility to produce uh, content or uh, signification. So uh, we, we were working uh, strongly like this uh, with some references that are historically uh, uh, possible to uh, Identify in the exhibition because uh, uh, works, uh, historical works like Anna Halprin or uh, uh, Cornelis Cardio, the Scotch Orchestra, uh, or uh, uh, Oscar Hensen uh, are uh, these uh, exactly uh, processes that propose a, a, a different way of compose, composition. So this was. Uh, um, something that came from also a common uh, uh, practice with Adam. And uh, for example, the Fredericianum and why we uh, wanted to cut the head of documenta, because the Fredericianum represent and the, and the previous documenta was the brain in uh, Fredericianum. Uh, it was extremely important to uh, uh, redefine uh, 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 the, the multi-centrality of documenta, and not just one, uh, and to uh, really uh, recompose uh, uh, the act uh, to, to go to Athens was one of them, but in Kassel it was extremely important to also uh, 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 reiterate this statement, but in a very different way. And how we came to uh, that was also very practical, because in Athens we were very uh, concerned to uh, have a strong st statement on public, uh, public, uh, publicness and public um, uh, uh, culture in, in a public field. And uh, the, the, the museum, the public museum, uh, the national museum was uh, closed, uh, unable to open. Uh, and that was for sure the, the first things to uh, uh, face when we arrive in, uh, in Athens. Why, why a, a country has no way to open its own museum, has no way to uh, show its own collection uh, since three years. And the collection three, since uh, six, uh, never, uh, the collection has never been uh, exhibited. So the first thing was how to, to make it possible to give back to the public the, the, the collection of the public. So, uh, uh, and uh, to solve this problem, uh, one, one uh, solution was to use the, uh, the uh, museum to, to, uh, to exhibit in the uh, most, uh, to, to, to make it as a, one of the main venue, but uh, without to be uh, like uh, the, uh, the invaders in, in Athens, which was not the, the statement, we, also, uh, we were also very concerned in, uh, to, uh, at the same time, balance our presence in that uh, museum. And that's why we, uh, we came to the uh, solution and uh, proposal to uh, exhibit the collection, the national collection in, in, uh, in Fredericianum. But this collection um, is also something that is a, an object in itself, is, a, is, a, is something to consider in itself as a collection. Each work should be considered, but the collection, the, the case should be considered. Uh, what is exactly a contemporary art collection of a national uh, a country like Greece? Or like uh, you know, like a, a lot of other country has this kind of collection, and uh, I think for curator looking at one collection like this and asking what uh, what, what kind of collection uh, uh, we are uh, facing, we are working with, is a very important question currently to ask. 
and um, uh, good or bad, uh, this is another question, but uh, the question is uh, what, what is exactly a national uh, contemporary art national collection? So that's, that's also uh, uh, the other aspect of, of uh, the way we work. Uh, uh, I think it's... Yeah, I, when I listen to how you um, talk about the collection and and um, and uh, you know the fact that I haven't seen it, uh, seen it makes me think that this uh, documenta for me was and also that I haven't seen the Athens section was for me and yeah you're saying you don't have to uh, see uh, that it's not the point to see everything uh, but at the same time the experience of documenta is uh, at the same time of what I have seen like. Uh, really, uh, like with my eyes. Plus, there is a huge chunk of things that uh, that I that I have only immediated, mediated um, uh, access. And this is like my experience of documenta, and I think most like most people's. And I think this also asks a, a question or uh, about art uh, about the position or the status of art criticism because you have a different relation to uh, art criticism that you know you, have, you go and see an exhibition and then you re read a review or uh, you read a review and then you go see the exhibition but the, I was in this position when I uh, saw some part of documenta but you, of course you want to understand what, what it is all about so you basically go and, and read <laughs> You know, you re you read the the text or you read the art reviews. You hear people talk about it, but it's a strange, like um, mediated experience. And I think this uh, art criticism at this point is is it's a different function, kind of. You know, it's like a kind of I don't know if um, democratizing or like giving you access to something that you are not that is not access. That is not humanly, or, or it's very difficult to access. So uh, that's one, one, one um, ins inside, or my one of my perceptions. And another one is that uh, uh, this document that I was a really passive viewer. I really went and saw stuff, and I was not really involved in uh, all all of those like parliamental bodies, all the all those discursive events and everything. Uh, before, for instance, when I went to Berlin Biennale, created by Artur Miesk many years ago, I was a more involved participant. And I, uh, from this, like, I'm, I, I'm thinking maybe that this, these big exhibitions nowadays are kind of split. You know, you have, a, you have one level uh, of like this pass, you, like mm, passive is not maybe the right word, because of course as a viewer you can very actively relate to it. To people. Uh, but you know what I mean, like uh, this kind of uh, passive viewer, uh, in quotations, and this like really more uh, uh, direct involvement, and then maybe this body, you know, uh, maybe then you become this body also, when you figure more, you have a more, um, like, um, more uh, intensive or stronger experience, stronger relationship to the whole uh, project. But this is like, yeah, but it's this kind of s weird, weird, Split and a very different experience, I would say. Yeah. I don't know if I could, just like reaction, just yeah, <laughs> association. So I was like thinking again, uh, this like art criticism thing, so that we come back to it. It's like thinking about like what the, the competencies or like uh, what skills you have to have as, a, as an art critic to, to write about this kind of exhibitions. And again, like it seems like all the framing of uh, of, of document as at least as, as these like fragments again, it's all fragments and uh, it's like too big. Uh, so, so any any kind of like insight or view you get to me, it seems like it's always just a fragment. But uh, all the framing or most of the framing which I which I kind of like notice actually didn't have so much to do with art or at least like not with contemporary art. Uh, that's that's somehow like my impression. Like again, maybe comparison to to Berlin Biennial, it's kind of like the last Berlin Biennial. Whatever we can think about it, I mean, that was the the show that uh, kind of like aimed to say something about contemporary art, like condition of contemporary art. And to me, it seems like the Documenta 14, obviously, 
had like a different uh, agenda. Like it was, it was speaking about like uh, political issues. It was speaking about power issues. It was speaking about uh, I don't know oppression, precarity, name it, uh, economics, but uh, not so much about uh, art itself. Uh, so for me, for example, that was kind of I, I, can, I found, us, found myself as a as a viewer in a trap. I mean, like you 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 went this lecture, you you went to see the exhibition, and there somehow was no exhibition, or that to me, I mean, like that there was just like these like, many discourses, like uh, or acts, or you know uh, statements or positions, that kind of like actually what what you were describing is kind of like uh, filling up the the score of some kind, but. Uh, this experience of like going to the exhibition somehow was like, at least for me, I don't know if this is like uh, maybe something you can react on from the from perspective of the artist. <laughs> I think if you, I, I, I agree with you. Um, I think if the experience of an exhibition is to uh, go to a place and uh, with your eyes look at things and experience them in like a couple of days, um, if that's what it is, then absolutely you are right. But I don't subscribe to that definition of exhibition. Um, I don't think exhibition is, this is, sounds also like a classical salon. You could walk in the 19th century and be fine with your definition of exhibition. Um, I've, I'm going to tell a little story and it's going to have a point. Um, it starts with a myth, Greek myth, of Medusa. So I think the first camera ever produced was a Medusa's head. And as you know, Medusa's head the gaze was fatal. Um, Medusa was in a cave, which anyone who entered it, she would turn them into stone corpses, which were images really, because she made images out of things that were moving, stones. And she was hyper-optical. She had this many snakes on her head, which she used for sight instead of what snakes really are, which is ears. They're a giant tympanic membrane. They spill every, uh, every, everything. And uh, then uh, she would suck these images up, so she would have much more images than she could process with her brain. And then Perseus, of course, uh, came into her cave and cut her head off. And the last thing that she has seen was, uh, was his image through the mirror, which was the shield. So then he uh, took the head and it became like this weapon that nobody could uh, defend against or evade. And uh, he would take it out of a bag, the kabisi, and he would uh, point at people he wanted to kill. And he would also kill with the last image of himself, because that's the last image she stored. Um, so Medusa became this gorgonic presence within the idea of the camera. Uh, and uh, when we absorb everything through our eyes, things accumulate behind the eyes because we can perceive more than we can process. Uh, and our culture and our exhibition culture is highly optical. So I think that um, a kind of a re-education of the body, for moving away from the optical to the body, personifying the body, uh, rewiring the body, uh, creating a body that is not this uh, giant eye which has produced the culture that uh, kills through images and really just decides through the images what is an animate, what is inanimate and administrates these lives. I think this is a basic misunderstanding also of the democratic concept, of this concept of expression. So I don't think our uh, eye should be a lens, you know. I think if you think a camera is just a lens and it's your eye, then it's just a thing that kills, it's a weapon that Perseus has bound forever because he bound the, the tool for making images and for seeing things, right? And oh, it kills things. Uh, I think, um, but it can no longer be a separate head either. And in order, in, instead of uh, looking at the camera, and becoming a lens, maybe you should say camera. And when you say camera through the spell of saying camera, you turn it into a room, and you turn it into a studio, and you have to enter that studio. And this studio is the exhibition that at least I was trying to make. Uh, so I think if we approach it in kind of traditional sonified means, uh, we cannot have the exhibition that we want. And I think art criticism and art writing in general must be tasked in kind of catching up both with what has technology and digital uh, world and movement, free movement of capital and currency and money and irrelevance of sovereign borders and uh, they're there only to stop the bodies that are not allowed to go through borders. I think there's so much 
um, consequence to the way that we look at what an exhibition is, if it's just through the eyes and movement of a body with the eye on top, which is really just a tripod that moves. Um, so I think we need new definitions and new discourse around this. So yeah, corporization, let's start with that head and not make it a killing machine anymore. Yeah. Thank you. So maybe I would react also to what Teresa said. <laughs> yes, nobody did or whatever. I think that you are, you are kind of aiming at a certain totality. Like you are suggesting that there is a certain totality that you need to comprehend in experiencing the exhibition. That like the experience would not be on a qualitative level, uh, somehow complete, or it would be, let's say, uh, lower if you do not get the information that you got here about the fact that this exhibition was also an example of a national collection. And uh, at least for me, and I think that for me there is always a kind of partial experience. We are always experiencing everything partially. I never really have a full experience even of myself or of what I'm aiming or doing. So I think this would be my kind of... I saw this exhibition in the film, as I said, and I think that uh, it was good even if I didn't look at it exactly the same way. I didn't have this discursive part that you are calling a part of the material discursive part. I think it's also about this, and then if I would follow up to what has been said, uh, that maybe there has not been so much spoken about the art, because uh, for me, the Comenta, the frameworks, and the art were very much connected. Also, when you were looking at the individual exhibitions, uh, it was related, as we already said, to each venue, but very strongly, but not in the sense that it would be drilled there or something. This is also why maybe you don't need a public space in this kind of usual reaction to the context within the material sense. But maybe it was actually somehow very, very well curated, even too well curated, some of them. So for many people, maybe the art, the way they perceive the art, they need this division, they need this piece. Maybe they also often need the brand to know the name already somehow. To, to know what they see to be able kind of to individualize it from the context. And as the context here was strong, that's maybe why a lot of the people, as also at the beginning I said, they said they didn't see so many good works. Uh, because we are used to look at works in a certain way, and this is also what for me document kind of may be present. But uh, Teresa wants to probably react. Have a curatorial statement that says that you have to like uh, that the documenta is the Greek part and the uh, and the castle part. Then of course, when you just go and see one part, there is a certain kind of absence necessarily necessarily to your experience a bigger absence than when you just go see an exhibition. And of course, you have a different perception than another one. Like of course, there is no totality. But this kind of like it's it's like. It's a part of, you know, something different. But, but, sure, sure. But I'm just suggesting whether this is going to be the quality of the microphone is focused here. Maybe that's yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, I think uh, what, what you you describe as uh, the Berlin Biennale and the documentary is interesting because I think that the Berlin Biennale, the, the unconsciousness of the Berlin Biennale is politics and the unconsciousness eventually of documenta is art. So it means that uh, how, how you see the, 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 the way that one is more into uh, apparently uh, uh, a question related to, to art, to practice, to uh, aesthetics but uh, you, you, this is not avoiding the, the, the political uh, uh, aspect of that. And uh, in Documenta, we were quite uh, conscious that we didn't want to say what to see to people. We didn't want to, to, uh, did, uh, to do this mediation because we don't believe of that. We believe of uh, sensi sensible uh, processes that are uh, produced by the work. We trust the artist, the works, first. And we try to be 
uh, a bit uh, on the other level. That's why uh, we are speaking about the context, about the, the buildings, and we let the works coming uh, and the artist making the work in order that the audience face directly the art and then there is a mediation to, um, to, to, to make. And finally, when now you see the website of Documenta, uh, you, 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 co uh, you compile all the elements, you would have a lot of text about all the works, uh, you have a lot of uh, uh, lectures that has been done about all the works. Now the information is, uh, is, is really complete, but we didn't want to, to make this uh, didactic uh, process that you have in, in, uh, in the uh, main uh, uh, I mean, uh, museum, but also uh, art fair now. You have, we, you have uh, like uh, 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 something to say how you have to think and how you have to, to approach the work. And this is a, a problem. We we uh, we think that a problem that as a problem, as as something that sh should be re re challenged uh, in a different way. And so we invited uh, artists to uh, also uh, be uh, uh, in a different approach on site, in a way that. Uh, uh, People uh, were uh, experienced uh, sometimes uh, uh, directly uh, some uh, um, uh, yeah, some some interaction and uh, were uh, involved in di in different way. Some sometimes in, in more uh, 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 contemplative way, but sometimes in more active way. And this diversity is, is very present in this documenta. <coughs> uh, and uh, but. Um, uh, what's happened eventually sometimes was that uh, the, the composition between all the curator uh, uh, didn't um, uh, uh, succeed. And uh, there, there, there is some successful combination and there is some unsuccessful. But it was the price uh, to, to make uh, the thing like this. And I prefer that sometimes there is uh, lake or uh, uh, then then to try to compose like a bouquet uh, it's not a bouquet I mean uh, we are not uh, <laughs> working like this so that's how we we did uh, this experience um, maybe because I would like I mean I can speak right now so, um, <coughs> I'm asking on this but um, okay, we'll lose it. Uh, just to make it like more, yeah, uh, yeah more professional. Uh, uh, I feel like uh, finally I, I managed, uh, I hope, uh, to also provoke uh, maybe some more, uh, yeah, emotional answers maybe than like uh, uh, it seemed like in the beginning, which is nice. Uh, and also I think like this is the time when when uh, I would now more explicitly uh, ask the audience. Uh, However, we are talking about this like shift from the audience towards the bodies, or the bodies like presented in this room. Uh, if there are some questions, I mean, there are some topics already which might be a bit provocative, or maybe also some huge gaps which uh, we haven't addressed at all. So I mean, this is the time maybe to get the answers uh, if you have some questions. And uh, if you have some questions, it would be maybe good to either address like kind of like anybody or ask this question specifically, like if you want to ask someone to make it kind of like easier for us. Uh, yeah. I, I have two remarks. Uh, I didn't try to uh, attend, but I went to Kassel and I missed all the, as well like the first 40 minutes, so uh, maybe you spoke about it. But for me there was really like two things really interesting. I mean it was my first uh, documentary as an adult because the first time I was there I was 18, so it was like totally somewhere else. But there was like two things like, I mean, really interesting for me because like the action of the rumor, as I didn't went to Greece, there was this rumor, you know. I mean, how was it, you know, what was, you know, the, what stayed in the brain of the people, this waiting thing, the marble, all these kinds of uh, things that you can keep like that and that you are so lately, um, I mean, rebuilding your, I mean, the documenta that you didn't see. So you are also expecting differently, I think, the castle one, because I didn't see it, others saw it. And for me, I mean, in castle, which was like super interesting, we were like with uh, somebody else, and in fact, we started by the rivers. It means that we didn't 
start by the main area, as you say, but we started by the periphery, okay? And when we arrived to the main thing, so in the periphery there was not so many people, and when we arrived, like suddenly on the place of the federation, you can see everybody. And so you say, so what did you think? I mean, what, you know, so how it is for you and stuff? And uh, I, I am sorry, but it's not against you and stuff, but really, like, we had like, some feedback, really, like super hard. And the thing is that by doing these things reverse, I mean, we had like totally a different point of view okay, with the person with whom I was. And this was really interesting because I think that was like the main point. It's like it's how to think the thing by the around, by the surround, and not that by what is supposed to be the main. Okay. So like really to reverse and to do the experience to do the kind of inverse experience, for me it was very really super strong. And to see like the different points of view, like just by the fact that geographically you started by something else than the other. So you are constructed something else. Okay. So just <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a comment on the question. No, it's but I think there also is possible to react on the comments. Um, yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean um, I'll I was, when Adam came to my studio, he was talking about moving the exhibition center away from the kind of uh, center of the city of Kassel and moving it northward, which is, there was this line, the Stern, which is a street kind of, that is a street that separates um, Kassel into kind of the more immigrant population area and a weapons factory, and then the place where middle and upper class people live and the kind of center of the exhibition. And I thought that move was, was great because uh, we really uh, lived in the area where we could identify with people, at least with this, I have much more in common with people from like Syria than I do with the middle upper class German uh, individual. Um, so really a lot more. Um, and uh, yeah, I think this move uh, was great and the decentralization of the exhibition in both kind of, in Athens it just smelled great, you know, like it was just already like a great beginning. Uh, I think it was. I think what was wonderful about the exhibition is that Adam started with this kind of provocative um, proposal, which was uh, uh, at the time when there was a financial war kind of exploding between uh, um, uh, Germany and uh, Greece. And then the context shifted and changed. Like history itself uh, created a different type of exhibition because there was so much more um, crisis of a different kind that Kassel is very much involved with as a major weapons exporter every night. You know, of wagons of weapons go to uh, NATO Pact and Syria, and then uh, they import back the refugees. You know, so it's like uh, um, uh, also kind of an import export <laughs> that we're talking about there. And so making economically a support for a system which is co-nourished by a large uh, military industrial weapons system is problematic. And keeping it only in that place, I think, would have been uh, in, the, um, in the context of his history that has changed. Um, without Athens, um, I think it would really have been uh, less interesting to, to me as an artist, anyhow. So. Yeah, I'm glad, it, I'm glad it occurred, and some lines of thought have been created, both historically and economically, which wouldn't have been otherwise made. So, I, um, and I am all for making your own exhibition. I think the educational department of the documenta really had uh, this, uh, an education, uh, was really, uh, Sepake and Claire who worked there made such an amazing, like, a uh, fun environment to actually try to learn about this exhibition, guide people through it full of joy, you know, uh, which was uh, a good place always to start for somebody who wanted to really know. And I really am a person, I'm a kind of person who can talk about that nail in the wall as an artwork for four hours, you know, no problem there. But making, I don't think any kind of exhibition could have been made even if you were randomly to go from one place to another. This was a very, I think, particular kind of exhibition, even if it was make your own exhibition. So everybody, I think, um, I think it was, it kind of did something to the brain because you had to walk the brain, yeah? Would you like to say something, Paul? Mm. Another question? Yeah. I, I think there is question. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, well, it's like a great task to say how many questions there are going to be, actually. Um, uh, <laughs> at least one, definitely. Uh, maybe two. <laughs> Um, I'm 
curious, uh, are you about the next document? Do you think that this like two city or this two space, or is this something that's going to be continued? Because actually in the last one, there was the, the um, you know, Kabul, uh, sort of, which is a little bit Next time, actually. completely in Athens. I think um, I have nothing to do with the next yeah. one because uh, what is also uh, very uh, precious and uh, it was really uh, uh, in, a, in a debate recently uh, and it's still in debate I think uh, is um, and. Uh, but what is precious is that uh, all the team is uh, completely uh, new each time. And, uh, but the team, uh, so we, we started at five, enfin, uh, Adam started alone, but uh, <laughs> then uh, I started uh, with Adam and some other curator, we were five, and uh, at the end we were uh, 1,500. So uh, when you include all the guards, uh, all the people involved. So it's, it's really something that produce each time, not just um, uh, um, a content, but also a, go a, a governmentality of art. And it's this, this is extremely <coughs> important because you can influence the way uh, you uh, uh, administrate, you produce this exhibition. It's not the case of, the, uh, of, of, of a lot of, of uh, uh, big uh, big event like this. So this is precious because this is possible for the art director to decide uh, to move to Athens, for example. And it was, uh, 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 in fact, uh, the wish, for example, of Catherine David uh, uh, already to uh, 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 to do it, but she she couldn't. So uh, the process to have done this progressively. Um, uh, is is interesting, but uh, I think it's very different to have a kind of parallel or uh, uh, to have a, 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 a side project, uh, even in Kabul, uh, than to really uh, completely move the uh, conception of the project elsewhere. So you you uh, you uh, really transform your point of view because we were really working from Athens to conceive castle. And this is a, 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 never, a very important uh, parameter that was never done uh, in, in Documenta to uh, completely move the, the place to con conceive the project. So uh, now I don't think that it's interesting uh, to, uh, uh, to follow that, I think each time should be a, 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 a very um, precise reason, uh, and um, this is eventually a, a new uh, artistic director who, who have to consider what was the, I mean, final achievement of this experience, and uh, I can think that it's it's, it's another um, consequence that will happen, but uh, there is no obligation for that. Okay, so from the last uh, question, I have, I have, I have a very uh, kind of particular um, comment, question. Um, I have to agree with Teresa when she said that there, uh, there was not so many uh, ways of uh, some kind of participation or, or direct inclusion with the, with the audience or the public. I also saw only the, the castle part. Um, but one thing um, from my observation, uh, one, one way how to uh, interact with, with the audience was in this, uh, this documenta um, making the, 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 the viewer, um, let's say, a customer. Um, I'm, I'm thinking about the, the example of this black soap and the beer or the shoes. Um, so my question is basically if you um, really believe that um, consuming uh, can be something subversive, subversive, and if you believe that uh, it happened in these particular cases, because me personally, I don't know. Mm. <laughs> I like your question. <laughs> um, 
I believe that the history of the world is the history of corporations. Uh, and um, I think that usually the way that history is told is through history of war and uh, blood being spilled and the building of sovereign uh, borders. So I never believed that it was about that. Um, I think it's a history of corporations and you go export it was a corporation that wants to think about what that means. And also a corporation that is, has an ongoing process of incorporation that never ends. Uh, so that he can not in a kind of a, a, a financial warfare way uh, change with the tide, but actually that he can always re-examine itself through a kind of a, 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 a historical flexibility. Uh, I don't believe that the act of consumption can be subversive. I believe that embodiment can be subversive. I really believe in uh, incorporating into the body things. I believe not through the eyes, but actually through the body. The Borosana shoes uh, were conceived by women uh, who were uh, made it for themselves for nine hours of laboring on the on a uh, production line while standing in the 60s. And this shoe became the official labor shoe of uh, former Yugoslavia. Now, that country, some argue, don't exist anymore. And um, this is uh, uh, now a shoe which, for this project since 2009, has been made as a shoe made to delineate labor and leisure, uh, as you ladies know. I believe in the right to leisure very much. And I think the first uh, way to actually know when you're laboring and when you're leisuring, because with laboring you're giving time, you're giving your body's energy, and those things you can't get back biologically or chronologically. So I believe in a gift, an awareness of when you're actually gifting this to others or like engaging others in this way is something that gets lost in this economy that I'm sure you all are living. Everyone's under kind of 40 here. Um, and I think knowing when you're working, when you're not, and in actually creating this internal clock uh, and a body that knows and is ready to wear and where to be ready, you know, uh, that, is, um, that is important. So no, I don't believe in consuming at all, but I do believe in objects and their ability to incorporate themselves into the body and do the work of politics by being literally attached. Um, so that's my answer. Awesome. <laughs> I like this. First, always the excuse. I like it. Uh -huh. So I, will, I don't believe in installing exhibitions anymore because we're at a crisis of uh, what people think exhibitions are and what exhibitions, thank you for the provocation, uh, uh, and, and what exhibitions should be and will be, hopefully, and should they even exist, and should these types of platforms exist now. And I think what the Comenta has done is it's challenged this format very much because you can't consume it all into a nice, neat, long story and an experience you can tell, you know, like, um, you can put away neatly, you know, and um, absorb immediately. Uh, I think um, I think that's good. I think that's a good first step. And I believe now, I, I mean, I never installed uh, exhibitions. I really believe in installing economies and uh, installing a different kind of use value. And I think much of the, uh, the, the team, at least, that I've spoken to was very much uh, interested in this. So yeah, I, I yeah, I got mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, difficult to, it's difficult to um, approach this. I think, um, what, what can I say to Sa? Just let, um, let you uh, go in. <laughs> let you go, and it will be better. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's, uh, 
very nice Eddie. Uh, okay, thanks very much like, uh, for listening, for questions, uh, for contributions. Thanks Thank everybody. You so much. And I think we need some like five minutes break maybe to readjust the things so that uh, the show can go on. So, <laughs> Thank you. thanks.